Okay, uh, my friend the paper wasp has built a nest. It's uh, a little bit out of reach. I'm up on a ladder here looking at the wasp. Uh, these wasps are a nuisance if you get stung by these. They'll, um, they'll protect their nest. They'll come back at you and try and get you a number of times. I have been stung by them. It is very painful. I know a couple of ways of getting rid of these wasps. Uh, you can use a little flamethrower, but I wouldn't suggest doing that against your house. And there's also some other fantastic insecticide products, and that's one of the ones that I'll be using this time around. I know it's very effective. This wasp nest has been there for about two weeks. The time of year as I'm shooting this is basically a week before Halloween. But of course, where I live, the seasons are flipped around and we're headed towards summer. I know that confuses the bulk of my audience. Warning. The warning on this video has been removed and this video is highly educational. Plan of attack is going to be very simple. When I see the wasp is preoccupied doing things like that, with its head in the nest, sometimes you'll see it put its back end into the nest as well. That's when I'm going to strike. And from what I've seen in previous times, this insecticide acts very fast. Often the wasp is just frozen at the point when it gets hit by the spray. And I'm going to try and capture this with a high speed GoPro camera. I can see Fluffy Cat's uh, warming up to this. She'll have a bit of a giggle at watching me take out the wasp. I've seen people over in the USA uh, sucking out yellow jacket wasp nests with vacuum cleaners. I wouldn't suggest trying to get a paper wasp with one of these. Uh, if you miss and you don't get the wasp, then you've got a very angry stinging wasp singing you multiple times. What I am going to use, and I've showed it before on my channel, and I've got no association with these people, is Blitzum Wasp Killer and Nest Destroyer. Don't you love that? And on the back here is very important to read how to apply. Please adhere to what it says there. Very important to give this product a shake before you use it. It's very directional when you spray it. Have a test spray if you're not familiar with it. And like I may have said before, I will be trying to capture this moment on a GoPro camera set at high speed. So the secret for me is, is to have a good aim, to hit the wasp when it's preoccupied doing something else, and uh, hopefully it'll be all caught on camera. Just waiting for the wasp to do its waspy stuff, get its head into something, or do whatever it does in its waspy way. Okay, I'm gonna hit it now. Oh, it's down, it's down, it didn't sound at all. I hope I've got it, I just hope I've got it. So the wasp nest is way up there, as they often are, and the wasp has fallen just down here, not far from the nest, and we'll pick little Mr. or Mrs. Wasp up and take a look. And I'll also grab that little nesty thing as well. Okay, let's take a closer look at both of those items. Okay, one paper wasp, and of course it's been taken out by the spray. Notice the stinger is out. I'm just pointing the uh, scalpel at the stinger area there. Uh, I think there was only one wasp working at this nest. Uh, often you'll see multiple, and if they do feel like they're being threatened, you'll have multiple wasps uh, chasing you out. Man, it is beautiful to look at. Look at the head there. Uh, you know, one part of me says it's a shame to get rid of it, but I tell you what, you don't want these guys hanging around because it would have attracted more wasps and it would have just ended up either one of the children getting stung, either my wife or myself. And believe me, you get stung by one of these guys and you remember it for a long time. It's way more painful than a bee sting. And that's why well, people sort of don't get along with wasps. Um, not all wasps are bad. Uh, you, we have got the mud daubers there, fine, they're docile. Um, but these guys uh, can be very, very aggressive when they want to be. And that's why I don't like them. Okay, let's move a uh, little stinger away and we'll take a look at the wondrous nest that little stinger has made. Okay, this is the nest. Uh, it's like paper. That's why they probably call them paper wasps. You know, mud daubers have mud nests, and that's why they're called mud dauber wasps. I hope this is educational enough for YouTube. Notice the beautiful, um, wow, geometric shapes going on there. Beautiful, uh, isn't it? It's a shame to sort of uh, have to get rid of it. I dare say inside this, I did say it's been around for about two weeks. We're going to find some larvae, I dare say, and I, dare, I could also dare say that if we have some expert entomologists out there, and if they see the larva, they can tell you how long the larva have been around for, because I'm an expert, 
uh, that is not an expert. I should really specify that because I've never been an entomologist. I just play around with things like this. I wouldn't know what I'm looking at and I'm making a giant mess. Well, I'm trying to find a young one. Let me find one and I'll point it out. This is going to be tricky to do and from what I can see there is one larva here and this will indicate to you it's fairly fresh nest and I'll try and get it out. Okay, um, I've seen other people do this and they make out that it makes this peculiar sound and blah 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 and ASMR. But I don't go down that, that, that way. There we go, there's a very very young larva. Beautiful in a way isn't it? Of a paper wasp. Lovely. So there's that one there, and actually the more carefully I look here, that's a bigger one in the sense, although it's still very, very small. There's also others on this other piece here. It's down the back here, it's sort of where the scalpel is, very small. And there's actually another one floating around in there somewhere, but it's virtually so small you, you can't see it. But the thing I want to point out is that spray, apart from killing the wasp, also kills all these little larvae as well, and I think that's, uh, well... That's a bonus, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite amazing. The larvae there, I can't see any movement or wriggling at all. Ah, yes, they are cactus. You're probably thinking, thank goodness I'm not a brain surgeon. Look at the way I use a scalpel, and I'm not smart enough to be one either. I do love a product that works. Let's take a look at the can again. Blitzum, wasp killer and nest destroyer. It does all of that, and also does this bit here. Kills wasps on contact, destroys their nest, sprays up to four meters. Everything there is true. I'll finish up with something to do with redback spiders, and yes, we've got redback spiders still. You can never get rid of them. But what I've done is I've set up some little areas that, well, basically lure them to live. I know this part of the garden has always been a prime area for redback spiders. I certainly had one here last year. They are certainly creatures of habit. And this gets explained in another video when I put these things together. It's around about August time. Uh, they're metal with a metal base. They've got some magnets on here so I can check underneath what's going on. And I certainly know there's a redback living here. I can see web on that section there. And if we take a look up inside here very carefully, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a spider rooney. This spider sort of appeared a couple of weeks back, so it proves that they do wander around looking for places to live. She set up a little web area here. I don't want to disturb her too much. She's got something she's feeding on there, and she's going to be a bit spooked if I keep looking at it because they're quite reclusive spideeth. I've got multiples of these around the garden. It's a bit like Spider Tank 3.0. I know what these spiders get up to. I know that what happens when an egg sac is laid up and how long it takes before it's hatched, so I can keep a nice close eye on her. And I'll just put this back. It's all magnetic and everything, and can be reset, and she can live happily ever after in there. Up until the time I decide it's game over. So the idea behind these is keep your friends close, but keep your enemies even closer. I have this video in the pipeline. It's basically a year late because as I'm making the video about the wasp, it's sort of like, well, supposed to be cicada time. But I'm not seeing cicadas like I was seeing this time last year because cicada cycles uh, are a bit of a mystery, although they are bound by prime numbers. I remember watching a program that explained the reason why you have these massive numbers some years, and then maybe another year you'll have none. Now, the video about the cicada season last year, it's a fairly complex video because it's fairly lengthy, and I was thinking the risk-reward factor on YouTube these days, it's very strange because if you put a lot of time in and effort to make a video, and then for some reason the silly systems on YouTube see this video has a problem and demonetize it and nine times out of ten the systems will win and then all that effort that you've put into making the video well brings you no reward. It's quite a peculiar way YouTube is set up these days. It really smacks you back down uh, and makes you think wow what am I doing here these days. It's nothing like the YouTube that I remember from let's say, well, you're, cl you're clocking back like seven, eight years ago. Maybe, let's call it ten years ago when it was really, really good. It's sort of peculiar, and I did this experiment where I played with Google reviews, and I've been doing that for a year now. Now, the Google reviews algorithm is very easy to understand. I know exactly the sort of pictures that work on that site, and I've got way more views on Google Reviews, let's say in the last year, versus what I achieved on YouTube. It's a little bit like Google Reviews loves me, yet YouTube completely hates me. 
And maybe I should do a video about what I got up to on Google reviews. Very, very interesting the way that algorithm works. And if someone said to me, Leo, can you explain what pictures work on Google reviews? I could tell you exactly what works and what to aim for when you're taking a picture. But if someone came up to me and said, oh, wow, Leo, you've been on YouTube for so many years. Tell me of the style of video that will work. You know what? There's no way I could answer that question. In fact, I am totally clueless in the way YouTube works or what becomes popular on YouTube. And that is quite spooky in a way. There's now some very interesting videos done by quite a few YouTube producers from all different parts of the world talking about what YouTube's done to them and what words are now sensitive and what themes are sensitive on YouTube. But what I don't like is that they start to, I call it, wave their little flag saying, oh, this minority of people are being victimized and they're not really seeing the bigger picture. I can just see Joe average people who are not minorities getting slammed by this system that YouTube now uses to basically elevate videos or crush them. They seem to be really, really good at crushing producers and crushing videos these days. It has me thinking there has to be an agenda to this and producers who are basically in the way of this agenda are being pulled aside, let's say, are being made felt very uncomfortable on a site where they used to be very comfortable. Well, anyway, in that verbal, you would have seen what's coming up when this Great Cicada study that I did, which was basically last Cicada season, man, it was epic. There were so many different varieties of Cicadas, and I followed the whole Cicada season basically from the very start and right up to the end where you, you see the last few Cicadas. Tricky video to make for YouTube because today's YouTube is so, so different.